Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video about backup and recovery. In this video, I'm going to start off by showing you how to configure the Shadow Copy Service. Now, this is something that is used to create backups of individual files for the users. Now, I say for the users because the really cool thing about this is not only do we have this automatic backup process, but the users don't have to ask computer administrators to recover the data for them. The users can actually go out there and recover that data all by themselves. Now, the main thing that you need to keep in mind when you're configuring the Shadow Copy Service is when you want these backups to be made and where you're going to store them. So we'll take a look at how you set up that schedule and how you pick a storage location. After we've done that, we will create one of these backups and I will then show you how to use what's called previous versions or how the user would use previous versions to recover the data. After we're done looking at the Shadow Copy Service, I'll show you how to install the Windows Server Backup feature. And once that feature is installed, we'll have access to the Windows Server Backup utility in which we will be able to create a backup of a volume or even the entire system if we want to. After we have a backup, I will show you how to recover lost data. I'll show you how to recover individual files. I'll show you how to recover a complete volume or possibly even recover the entire operating system. And once we're done looking at how to physically go into the system and, and do backups and do recoveries, I'll go over some handy little additional backup tips with you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's just jump right into one of our Windows Server 2008 computers and take a look at how this all works. For this lesson, we are going to once again connect to the New York Member 1 server. Now, while I connect, there's a couple things I'd like to point out to you about this server. Well, one, just to start off, when it comes to backups, all servers are important to be backed up. So whether it be domain controllers, member servers, it doesn't matter. The reason we're going to use a member server here is because backups on a domain controller are a little bit different because our, one of our main concerns is backing up the Active Directory database. Now we're not going to worry so much about Active Directory right now as much as we are concerned with the actual backing up of data. So we're going to use a member server. Now the other thing I want to point out is if you've been following along with all the videos up to this point, you may have noticed that we've used New York Member 1 in pretty much everywhere. And that's not an accident. I want you to see that a single Windows Server 2008 computer has the capability of managing all these different network functions simultaneously. So pretty much, other than the a couple of the original high-level networking services, we've been just leaving everything alone as we've gone along to show you that we can do all of this on a single server. Now there's one other thing that I want to tell you about this server, and that is that I made a slight change since the last video. And to show you this change, let me go ahead and open up Explorer. So I'm going to click Start and select Computer. If you've been paying attention, you will have noticed that in the past, all we have had on this computer is a single 80 gig C drive. I have now added a second hard disk to this computer. The reason I've done this is because in order to run certain backups, we have to have an alternate location to store those backups. So if you are following along with me, you may want to pause the video here and go ahead and install an additional hard disk in your computer. Or if you're using a virtual machine, go ahead and install an additional virtual hard drive in that machine. Okay, now the first thing I want to show you is how shadow copies work. And in order to show you this, well, we have to have some data to be backed up. So let's go into our C drive and create another new folder here. So right click, New Folder. We'll just call this backup data. And then in the backup data folder, let's create a text document. So new text document. We'll just call this backup one. Now I'm going to go into the backup one file and say this is the original, just so that there's some text there so you'll know the difference between what you're looking at. So I'll go ahead and close and save changes on that file. And we now have data. Not a lot of data, but we have some data. So in order to show you shadow copies, 
let me back out of here and I want to right click on my C drive and go to properties. Now I could go right to configure shadow copies. Matter of fact, let me select that once for you. And you'll see what window opens up here. It's the shadow copies configuration window, but I want to show you something. I'm going to click out of here. If I were to go to the properties of this drive, I could also click on the shadow copies tab and I get the exact same window. Either way is perfectly acceptable. You'll get the exact same result. Now you'll notice that right now shadow copies are disabled on both the C and D drives. If I want to enable shadow copies, guess what? All I have to do is click enable, but I'm not going to do that because before I enable it, I want to configure it. So I'm going to click on the settings button. When I click on the settings, you'll see here that it's the C drive that we're setting this up on. It's asking us where do you want to store these shadow copies, these backed up copies of the files. And one choice is on the C drive, same drive, that's perfectly acceptable. Of course, understanding that if you lose that drive, you've lost everything. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Or because I do have a D drive, I could choose to store it on the D drive. So in this instance, I'm going to actually keep it on the C drive because the D drive is going to be used for something else a little bit later. Now you can set a maximum size that you are willing to tie up for these shadow copies. Basically what will happen is as copies of the data are being made, when we get to this 8 gig that it has defaulted to, and by the way, the reason it's 8 gig is because the default will always be 10% of your disk space and this is an 80 gig hard drive. So it defaults to 8 gig. What will happen is as we're backing up our data, it will keep multiple copies of these backups, giving the user some flexibility on exactly when they want to go back. And you know, as they say, I need to recover my data, you can pick, well, I want to go back to this day or I want to go back to this day. But when this 8 gig gets full, it will continue to make these shadow copies, these backups. But what it will do is it will delete the oldest version in order to make room for the newest version. So that's where the significance of the maximum size comes into play. Now down here is a schedule button. And this is where we determine when shadow copies will be made. So we'll click on the schedule button. The default setting. The default setting is that two shadow copies will be made every weekday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Once at 7 a.m. and then a second one at 12 noon. So by default, those are the two times when a shadow copy will be made. Typically at the beginning of, of what would be a typical workday and then once at lunchtime of a typical workday. Now if that is too much, you can always select one of these and delete it. Or if it's not enough, you can click on new and you'll see it adds 9 a.m. But guess what? This is not set in stone. Matter of fact, none of these are set in stone. All you have to do is select the one that you want to modify and change this to say, no, 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 I don't want 9 a.m. I would like it to be once at 5 p.m. And, and then do you want this to be daily, weekly, monthly, et cetera. You know, you can do it at system startup as opposed to at a specific time, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Now, once you have your schedule in place, I'm going to click OK, and then click OK once again. You'll notice that even though I never clicked the Enable button, and this is something you want to be cautious of, by simply clicking the Settings button and configuring those settings, it assumes that you now want shadow copies enabled. If you don't want them enabled, then you can disable them. And then you'll get a warning message saying, hey, you know what you're about to do? And then you click yes to go ahead and disable them. Now I'm gonna say no, because I don't want to disable them. I want my C drive to actually have the shadow copies enabled. And you'll notice here that it's gonna go ahead and it says the next runtime here will be at five o'clock. Now I don't want to wait till five o'clock for a backup copy to be made. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the Create Now button. The Create Now button does just that. Let me go ahead and click it. 
it will create a shadow copy of whatever data is out there on the C drive right now. And it just did so. Okay, it went ahead and made a, a shadow copy right now. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go back into my C drive, go back into the backup data, and go back into the backup1.txt file. And let's make a change. Let's go ahead and change this to say this is changed data. And then go ahead and close it and save it and say, oh, no, wait a minute. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, how many times have we done that, huh? Where we went ahead and opened a file, made a change, and then you meant to do like a save as to make it a new file, but you overwrote the original? Oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, when that happens, we have the ability to now recover that data. What you do is right click on the file and go to restore previous versions. And again, there's two ways to do this. You can either click restore previous versions. I want you to notice the window that opens up or let me cancel out of there. You can go to the properties and select the previous versions tab. It's the exact same window. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now you'll notice that there is a shadow copy that has been made of this data. And I have to caution you. If a file is made and then a change to that file is made and it was done between the different shadow copy scheduled events, well, then you won't find this here. The only reason this shadow copy exists is because I manually told it to create one. If I would have just created a file and then made a change to that file, I'm out of luck. So that's why it's important to make sure your shadow copies are being scheduled at appropriate times where users would most likely be able to go back and get back to an original of their data. Now, here's the original, or at least we hope it is, right? And we have a choice. I can choose to just open the file. And if I click open, you'll see, oh, look, that is. It's, I get to see this is the one I wanted. This is the original. And then I have a choice of being able to either copy this file and what that does is that makes it this is like doing that save as meaning if I really wanted both copies the new one that I overwrote and then also my original I could click copy to go ahead and make a new copy of this data and give it a new name or I could click restore which will overwrite the changes if we truly made a mistake and we just want to restore back to the original let's do that one right now I'm gonna click restore and it asks me, are you, know, are you sure you want to do that? And you'll notice this is because it's going to replace the current version with an older version. And just like any other time that you are trying to overwrite an existing version, you're going to get a warning. So I'm going to say, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Click Restore. It has been successfully restored. Click OK. And then click OK out of this window. And let's open up our backup one.txt file. And you'll notice it is, again, the original. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. And we can actually close all the way out of here because that's pretty much it. That's how shadow copies work. So now that we've seen how shadow copies work, let's take a look at how to install the Windows Server Backup feature. Now, in order to install a feature, we go to the same place that we go to install roles, and that would be the Server Manager. So let's click Start and select Server Manager. Once in the Server Manager, Again, instead of selecting roles, this time we're going to select features. And I'm going to go ahead and click on add feature. Now it's asking me to select the feature that I would like to add. Let me go ahead and scroll this down because the one we want is down near the bottom. It's called the Windows Server Backup Features. And if I click the box, now you'll notice that it's a gray, almost kind of like half filled in box. And that's because we have the option of installing Windows Server Backup and we also have the option of installing some additional command line tools. Now we're not going to get into the command line tools just yet, so let's just worry about the Windows Server Backup for right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And it says, all right, this is what you're about to install. And I say, yep, that's what I want. And I'll click Install. And it begins to install the Windows Server Backup feature. 
Now this, just like other roles and features that we've installed, can take a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and I'll be right back with you as soon as it has completed its installation. Okay, so the installation has succeeded, so we can now close the Add Features wizard and go ahead and close the Server Manager utility. Now, this is one thing that is new to Windows Server 2008 that has somewhat significantly changed from previous versions of Windows operating systems, and that is the location of the Windows Backup utility. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Start, and in the past, what we used to do is we used to go to All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and we used to find our backup utility here. Well, it's not complicated like that anymore. See, everyone used to always ask why. Why was that so difficult? Well, what they've done in Server 2008 is they, they've come up with a solution to that problem. And so now you just click Start, Administrative Tools, right where you would think it should be, Windows Server Backup. Go ahead and select that. And again, we have a very, very different interface than we've ever seen before either. In the Windows Server Backup Utility, you will see here that it says you can perform a single backup or schedule regular backups using this application. Well, let's start off by just making a single backup. And you do that by clicking on Backup Once. I'll click on that now takes just a moment there we go and we now have a quick little wizard that basically says I can either create a backup using the same options that you used in the backup schedule wizard which you'll notice is grayed out and the reason it's grayed out is I don't have any scheduled backup done yet or you could choose to do different options meaning this particular backup is going to be unique from anything else that we've done so I'm gonna go ahead and well leave it at different options that's the only choice that we have click on next and now we need to decide, do I want to do a backup of the entire server, or do I want to have a custom backup of only specific volumes? Now in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to just do a certain volume. So I'm going to click Next, and I have to select the volume. I get to choose either the C or the D drive. Now I'm going to do the C drive, and it shows me that Currently, although the C drive may be 80 gig in size, we're only using a little over 10 gig. So that when you're deciding where you want to store it, you will know if you have enough space to store that much data. Now you can choose whether you want to be able to enable a system recovery, which has to do with whether you want to include the operating system files or not. So if I were to clear that checkbox, you'll notice it clears the C drive because the C drive was included by default because it was doing a system recovery. Now if I click on the C drive, we're doing just raw data. So that's all we actually want to do is the raw data. So I'm going to leave that just how it is. No system recovery here. And go ahead and click on Next. Now we need to choose where we want to store the backup. Now we can store the backup either on another local drive or we could send it out to a remote shared folder. Now, as I told you before, we installed that extra drive for this exact purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and say store it on a local drive and click next. Now, where do we want it to go? We want it to go to the D drive. Total backup space in that destination is 80 gig, free space 79.91, I need 10.65, we're good to go. Go ahead and click on Next. Now here is an advanced option that has to do with backing up of certain applications. And most specifically, this would have a lot to do with uh, database type applications. If you do the Volume Shadow Service copy backup, which you'll notice is recommended, it says you use this one if you're using another backup product to back up those individual applications. And what that means is, it's not going to mess with the log files for that application. This is the recommended way to do it if you have a database application that you are looking to have backed up. You're going to want to have specific backup software for that application. If you don't and you truly want Windows to manage everything, 
then you can do the full backup. And what this will do is fully back up everything. And you'll notice it clears the application log files. It truncates those log files. This, I'm going to tell you straight out, can be really dangerous. I have to completely agree with Microsoft here and say that it's recommended to use another backup software that is designed for that application if you have that need. So we're going to leave that button checked and go ahead and click next. Here I get a confirmation of what I'm doing. I'm backing up the C drive. I'm putting it on the D drive and click backup. Now this process, as you could probably guess, will take quite some time. Before I pause the video, I do want you to see here that it says backup not started. That is normal. Don't, don't freak out when you see that because you'll notice now it began scanning and began the backup process. It takes a moment for it to analyze the system to know exactly what it's about to do. But that is something that I find that people will do sometimes is they say, wait a minute, it's not working. Why? Now, another thing I want to point out to you is that right here, it says you may close this wizard and backup will continue to run in the background. So if I were to click close, I won't hurt anything. Backup will continue to run. But there's really nothing else for me to be doing right now. See, if there was other work I needed to do on this system, that's when you do this. But in this instance, I need this backup to finish before I can show you how to go in and restore the data. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this open. I'm just going to pause the video. And then I'll be back here with you. And again, depending on how much data you have on your system and how fast your hard drives are, how fast the system is, this could take anywhere from minutes to hours. So we're going to need to both pause right here and come back as soon as we've reached completion. Okay, the backup has now completed. And we know that because instead of a status bar here, we now see backup completed. So let's go ahead and click close. And you'll see here that it shows that a backup was run successfully. Now, the next thing we could do is we could create a backup schedule. And you'll notice, by the way, there's this warning right here. No backup has been configured for this computer. This is not saying you've never done a backup because we just did one. It's saying that there's no backup configured, meaning we have no scheduled backup in place. So to show you that, I'm going to click on backup schedule. And you'll see here that this wizard is very, very similar. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now we have to decide do we want the full server or just a custom backup. And let's do a custom again. Click next. We get to choose what data we want to back up. And you'll notice that this time we don't really have a choice. We have to back up. It says included by default. So we need to back up our C drive. Click next. We need to say, well, when do we want to do this? Do we want to do it once a day? Or do we want to do it more than once a day? I would say once a day is, is satisfactory. So we'll say at 9 o'clock at night, good time. Let's run back up then. Go ahead and click on Next. We need to now select a destination disk. So I'll click Show All Available Disks. And you'll see here that here is the D drive that we installed into the system. Click OK. So now we can go ahead and back up to our D drive. Click Next. You'll notice here it says that when you finish this wizard, the selected disk will be reformatted and all the existing volumes and data on the disk will be deleted. OK, so that is one thing to keep in mind is if you want to use the D drive as a for instance, or whatever disk you want to use to store it, this disk is going to be completely eliminated. So I'll go ahead and say yes. Now, obviously, we want to take caution here because we just threw a backup on there, and we want to use that backup. So I'll click yes, but we're not going to actually finish this wizard, or else we will completely undo what we just did. You see here that there's a label of what it's going to be called, so that's fine. Go ahead and click next. You get a confirmation that this is what you're about to do, and click finish. So basically, it's, it's essentially the same thing other than the fact that because you are forced into doing a system backup, when you do the schedule backup, you have to have a, a separate disk and that that disk will be completely reformatted. So I'm going to hit cancel because we don't need to do another backup identical to the one we just did. What I do want to show you is how to recover data. 
So in order to show you how to recover data, let me go ahead and minimize our Windows Server Backup Utility. And let's go back into Windows Explorer. Start Computer, go into our C drive, go into the Backup Data folder, and let's delete the backup one.txt file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Shift key on my keyboard and hit Delete. Now the Shift key is what makes it that this file gets completely deleted as opposed to being sent to the recycle bin. And that's why you'll notice it says, are you sure you want to permanently delete the file? Yes. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. All right, well, if you ever want to recover data that's been completely lost, and maybe you don't have the ability to do it through previous versions, then what we can do, let me go ahead and close this, so we can go to our Windows Server Backup Utility, and we can select to recover data. So let's click Recover get into the recovery wizard and it says well what server do you want to recover data from well we want to recover data from this server this is the server that lost data so let's click next and you'll see here that you get a calendar showing you what dates the, the dates will be in bold okay just I clicked away from it so you can see here that here all these dates are not in bold except for the, the 24th the 24th is in bold and then you'll see here you just have the one time to choose from that we created a backup. So that's the one that we're going to use. If we had more, we would see more dates in bold and we would see more times to choose from. So let's go ahead and click on next. Now we get to choose, do we want to restore the entire volume? That's one option, but then we'd have to wait to restore the entire 10 gig that we backed up before. So in this case, we know that it's just a specific file that was deleted. So we're going to select to recover files in folders. So let's go ahead and click on next. And here, what it's doing right now is it is scanning through that backup to see what data is there. Now that it's done, I can expand New York member one. Here it'll show you it's the C drive that was backed up. I can expand that. I can go to the backup data folder and highlight backup one dot text. That's the file we want to get back. I can choose to recover any and all of this data. And that's really, really cool. You know, in the old days where you had to pretty much recover everything and then pick out the stuff you wanted, now you can just go right to the specific files and folders and say, this is the stuff I need to recover. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight backup1.txt, click next. Now I have a choice. Do I want to recover this data back to its original location where it came from or to another location? The reason you might back up to another location is if maybe we're not recovering for the purposes of recovering lost data, maybe we're recovering for the purposes of grabbing another copy and putting it somewhere else. So we're going to go ahead and say recover to the original location because we are trying to recover original data. When this wizard finds files and folders in that location, meaning if there's already stuff there, what do you want to do? Because, you know, if I may have picked a folder and I said recover this entire folder because maybe there were a dozen files gone from the folder, but there's a total of, let's say, 20 files in the folder. Well, what do you want to do with the other files? You can either create copies so that you have both versions. You can overwrite the existing files with the recovered files, so we're going to actually just overwrite everything and go back to our backup. Or you could choose to say, no, you know what? Don't recover those files and folders if they are already there. I only want you to recover the stuff that is missing. Now, in this case, it really doesn't matter what I pick because I'm only recovering one file, and that file is not there. We deleted it. Now, the other option that we have here is to choose whether we want to restore security settings or not. And in most instances, the answer is going to be yes. The data was set up with certain level of security, and you want to recover it with that same level of security. So now that we have all of our recovery options set, let's go ahead and click Next. And now you get a confirmation of what you're about to recover, and click Recover. Now this can take quite some time if you're recovering large quantities of data, but in this instance, you'll notice I, I'm restoring one kilobyte of data, so it's done. It took a matter of moments, and it already restored the file, and I can go ahead and click Close. And you'll see here 
that the file recovery was successful. Now, if I close out of our Windows Server Backup Utility, you will see here I'll click on Start, go to Computer to take us back into Windows Explorer, go ahead and go into the C drive, go into the Backup Data folder, and look what's there. The backup1.txt file has been recovered. If I open it up, this is the original. I feel almost like a magician. And, you know, it's like, pick a card. Where'd that card go? Here it is. It's, it is the original. It's the one you put your initials on. So <laughs> anyway, really, that, that, that's how this all works. That's how you get data back once it's been lost. Now, if I wanted to do a complete system recovery, you know, maybe the operating system just completely won't boot. If I've previously created a full system backup, I can access that backup from the operating system CD or DVD. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and close out of Explorer. And I'm going to reboot this computer because I have the operating system DVD in the drive right now. So I'm going to click on Start, the little arrow here, and select Restart. Even though I don't have an actual backup in place, I'm going to show you how you would get to it. So I'm going to click Restart, and in just a moment, and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do this off the DVD. So I'll press the Any key to boot from my DVD. It will take just a few moments here while Windows loads the files off of the DVD. And then once it does, it will go into what looks like the installation process. Uh, from when we originally installed the operating system. So so take just another quick moment here. Okay, the files have now been loaded and it's going to now begin the installation process. But we don't want to install the operating system. What we want to do is go ahead and repair the system. So the first screen that's going to come up here in just a moment, there we go. We need to select a language, so we have English that we're going to use. Go ahead and click Next. And instead of installing, we're going to repair the computer. Now you need to select an instance of the operating system that you want to repair. So here we have the one instance installed on this computer, Windows Server 2008. And go ahead and click on Next. And we now need to choose a recovery tool. And the tool that we want to use is a complete PC restore. Click on that link, and you'll see that it is searching for backup disks. And it now says, well, what backup do you want to use? Here, it asks me if I want to use the latest available backup, which is the one that we created on our D drive, or if we had a different backup that we wanted to use. Now, at this point, there's really nothing else I can do because this particular backup does not have the full operating system installed. But if we did, all you would do is go ahead and click Next to verify that you want to use it. You would be presented, basically, with a confirmation that you're about to do so. You say, boom, go do it. And it will recover your computer from that backup. So anyway, that's how you can recover data ranging from a user recovering their own individual file using previous versions, or an administrator recovering files, individual files and folders using Windows Server Backup, or possibly even recovering uh, an entire volume, or in this case now, the entire system. All right, let's go talk about a few additional tips you want to keep in mind when worrying about your data and how to backup and recover it. So a few additional backup tips you should always keep in mind. First of all would be make sure that your users store important data in a location which is backed up. One of the biggest problems that we have as administrators is that you have individual users who will save data on their own local hard drive on their client computer and there may not be a backup system in place for that individual computer. So it's very important that you educate your users on exactly where to store data so that it'll be backed up. Now you can assist the users with this process by doing things like folder redirection, which is where you take common folders like their My Documents folder or possibly even their desktop, 
And although they will believe that it is stored on their own local computer, you can redirect it to being out on a network share on a server that is backed up. And so I have to tell you, not only is this a big problem for administrators, but even yours truly has fallen victim to storing data on a local computer and losing that data and, and having to go back and find other methods to either recreate or get that data back because it wasn't stored out on a server being backed up. This is a very important thing to keep in mind. Another thing is you want to make sure that you are very familiar with the backup media that you are using. Now what I mean by that is if you are using CDs or DVDs, well you want to know exactly how much capacity they have. You want to know how quickly they can be written to. You want to know how much data can be written over a certain amount of time. You also want to know what's the shelf life of this data. You know they now say that this optical data like CDs and DVDs have a much, much shorter lifespan than originally thought. So that's one thing to keep in mind is depending on how long you need the backup, make sure that the lifespan of the media will handle it. Let me tell you another for instance. If you're using tape, well tapes come in many different speeds and many different sizes. And so that's one thing to, to start off with is how going back again to how much data we can back up and how much time. But also tape backup is magnetic media. So you want to make sure that that media is stored in a location where it's not going to be anywhere near any magnets. And there's actually a, um, a funny story that I once heard from a computer administrator about some data that was being backed up and then the tapes were being stored in a safe and the safe was an old, old safe that used magnetic technology for the locking mechanism. And so what that meant was every time the tapes were being put into the safe to be secured, well, they were actually being erased or destroyed. So that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. You want to also make sure you have an actual backup strategy. I have walked into way too many environments where they use what I like to call by the seat of their pants method. <laughs> you walk into a company and you say, well, you know, where's your most recent backup? And that backup, you know, it was done, you know, they go, I don't know, I think it's been about a week or two since we've done backup. You don't want to just randomly say, you know, I think it's been a while, maybe we should run backup. That's why the Windows Server Backup Utility really pushes for you to have that daily backup in place. But not only do you want to have a backup schedule in place, but if you're using removable media, such as backup tapes, you want to have a rotation so that you have multiple backup copies to be able to go back to. You want to go ahead and have some form of rotation in place. A very common one that has been very heavily used is something called grandfather, father, son, or the short version, you might have, you might have heard of it as GFS. With the GFS system, what that basically means is you have a backup tape, and it doesn't have to be a tape. You could be using CDs, DVDs, whatever. If you're using any form of rewritable, removable media, you want to have one tape for every day of the week. You want to have one tape for every week of the month. And you want to have one tape for every month of the year. As a for instance, that's one version of GFS. So that basically you have a tape for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's how that tape is labeled. And the tape that you make on Monday, well, you won't use that tape again until the following Monday. So you know that you can always go back to any day of the last week. You'll also have another set of tapes labeled week one, week two, week three, week four, so that each week of the month you have a tape so that you know during a given month you can always go to the end of any given week. And then you want to have a tape labeled January through December so that you have one for every month of the year. This gives you a very flexible capability to restore to different locations. Now another piece of the backup strategy has to do with where you store these tapes or whatever media you happen to be using. Again, I cannot tell you how many times I've walked into a company, see a server 
and then see a pile of tapes sitting next to that server. You really don't want to do that because although that may help protect you against hard disk failure, it's not going to protect you against things like a fire or a natural disaster that destroys the building. So you want to probably implement some form of off-site storage. Now the last thing I really want to emphasize to you is that you want to perform regular recovery drills. A backup strategy is no good unless you know for 100% that you can recover the data that you're backing up. So you should have regular recovery drills where you flat out say, boom, we lost data, we got to get it back. And the closer you can come to a real life scenario, the better off you are. So if you can actually create a situation where you maybe page certain administrators, maybe page them in the middle of the night, over the weekend, whatever it might be, and say, you know, boom, 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 warning, 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 data is gone, please come in and take care of this, and see how they react. That's the best type of recovery drill that you can have. Because again, I can tell you, I heard a story, I have a lot of these stories when it comes to backup and recovery, because data is so important. But it was a story about basically a guy who had a perfect backup plan in place. And he used this plan. Matter of fact, he did everything religiously according to plan for three years. And there was never a problem. But after three years, they finally had catastrophic data loss. He went to go recover the data. With confidence, he went to go recover the data. And he wasn't able to do so. There was a problem with the tapes. And he suddenly realized he now had nothing. So backing up is not good enough. You have to have actual recovery drills. All right. So now you have a few extra backup tips to keep in mind when you're setting up your overall backup and recovery solution. So let's see what we've learned in this video. By this point, you should now know how to set up the Shadow Copy service to automatically create backups of individual files for the users. Likewise, you should also know how to instruct your users on how to use the previous versions tab to get some of that data back. You should know how to install the Windows Server Backup feature and use the Windows Server Backup utility to back up your volumes or possibly your entire system. And you should also know how to recover lost data. All right, well, I'll tell you what. If there was anything in this video that you don't get, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to go back and watch it again or make sure that you are solid because data is one of the most important things to an organization.